Let us open with a prayer as we are standing. Heavenly Father, I thank you again for this beautiful day and for the Sabbath you've given us and the testimonies that we'll be hearing for the experiences that we could have. And we just want to surrender this time uh, to your hands and uh, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, because afterwards we're going to have the New Year's program, there's going to be some rearranging and different things here. We'll be starting the program and uh, run through it rather quickly, or rapidly as Joachim says. First out will be Cure, and Per Ariel will be uh, presenting that. Um, you can already make yourself ready and come up. I just have a little bit of announcement before we let you go. Uh, tomorrow there will be also opportunities to share testimonies, whether it is from outreach or from this convention, if you've been blessed or had any uh, good experiences, then uh, please speak with Jenny. Uh, Jenny, can you stand up? People can see Jenny. So if you want to share any testimonies about convention or from outreach, please uh, say hi to Jenny and ask about that. So I think that's about it. Um, about the New Year's program, it starts 6.30 and we will be eating, uh, we'll all be meeting here, but we will eat uh, not too late into the program. So that's just for your info. Then, time is yours. Thank you very much. Um, I am presenting a cure physiotherapy. And as you can see on the screen, seven years ago, we were some people from a local church that were gathered. And we asked ourselves the question, how do we reach people in Copenhagen with the gospel? And we realized that for us that were sitting there, we were actually physiotherapists. So we started thinking, could we use our education to spread the gospel in Copenhagen? And that was the beginning. By God's grace, we were able then to, um, to create a, a new clinic in the midst of Copenhagen, in the city center of Copenhagen. And our goal is to reach the people of Copenhagen. But we are working as physiotherapists. So that's our main you know, education. And um, um, when we studied, uh, the words from L.G. White, we found out a principle that we actually used, decided to use. I will read a quote here from, um, uh, it says here, in order to have good health, we must have good blood, for the blood is current, is the current of life. It repairs waste and nourishes the body when supplied with the proper food elements and when cleansed and vitalized by contact with pure air, it carries life and vigor to every part of the system. The more perfect the circulation, the better will the work be accomplished. So the better circulation, the better the body will work. So actually, we created our own system that we call ICMT, Intensive Circulation Mobilization Therapy. And that's nothing special, but it's very unique. <laughs> so, um, because nobody else uses it. Uh, but by God's grace, we have been able to help patients that have been suffering with pain everywhere in the body, like back pain or knee pain, and people that have been uh, going to all kinds of specialists, not having help, and we can help them. We can help them get rid of the pain. And we know that we are not able to do that, but only when we are co in a cooperation with uh, the heavenly healer. So we actually, we see ourselves as um, we are Jesus' hands and feet here. So we use the principles and we pray, not with our patients, because we are in Denmark, so that would be too close but we pray for all our patients. And when I'm standing there treating these patients, I pray to God that he will guide me and direct me 
so that I can find exactly the right spots where the patients can have healing. So um, we are now four physiotherapists working uh, at the clinic in Copenhagen, and we have another clinic in the midst of Shellen, uh, one hour from there. And um, we are using actually Facebook to, um, to get in contact with people. As you can see here, uh, one of the movies uh, have about half a million um, views. So people are actually watching when we are telling about some of the principles we are using. In this case, it's about uh, knee problem. And we are just saying things that people, they realize, wow, that's exactly what I have. Because normally you can say that we are the best or we can help you with everything. But when we just tell about the symptoms people have and then recognize, wow, that's exactly how I have it, then they call us or then they write to us. And uh, by God's grace, again, we have been helping a lot of people by this. But it is a mission clinic. So um, we have created uh, some surroundings that when people come, when they open the door to the clinic, and a lot of people have told this to us, it feels like whew, they come into another world, they say. Because we have created um, a surrounding, it's more like a home, it's not like a hospital, and uh, it's very nice and silent music, Christian music actually, we have Christian text on the, on the wall, we have books for free, uh, the Great Controversy, The Sire of Ages, Steps to Christ. We have uh, Sundhetsbladet. And, uh, well, people, they come in there and they look around. This is different. And then they start asking questions. And when they ask questions, we are there. And um, we also, during the last years, we have decided that this is one of our mission, but we also want to be more direct in the mission. So actually here you can see my colleague, we actually, in, uh, we are taking every second week, we use a couple of hours to, to create videos uh, with uh, Christian topics. So actually you can see, this is how it looks like, and this is how it ends up looking like when it's on the video. So we call it Cure Bible Camp, and actually um, it's the mission to reach other Christians, where we have topics like uh, what happens when you die, and do Christians drink alcohol and, yeah, all the topics that, that we believe as Seventh-day Adventists that other Christians also should have opportunity to, uh, to know more about. So this is a really blessing to have this uh, as part of a working day, actually. And uh, we've also been able to create uh, more like music videos with uh, a Danish Christian singer, an Adventist singer, Beate Kruger, some of you know her. And uh, she is creating the music herself, and we have been creating music, music videos together with her. And all of this we have um, on our YouTube channel, that's called Cure Bible Camp. Um, Cure Bible Camp actually comes from that we also really wanted to have uh, a place where we can gather people like this uh, for a weekend and uh, study the Bible. So we have done that uh, now four times. The last time was uh, one month ago. And when we were about 125 people gathered together. Um, and actually, of course, the main goal is to, to reach Adventists, to have deep Bible studies. But four or five people from other denominations showed up in this event. Um, I, I want to tell one on this. It was a guy that, that had been Christian as uh, a youngster. Then he left for like New Age. Then he came back again and he went to an antique bookstore in one uh, town in, in, uh, in Denmark. And he found a couple of books with, with an author called Ellen G. White. So he thought, oh, that was interesting. He started reading those books and uh, he came into a homepage called ngwhite.dk. And that is one of our friends. And he had actually on the homepage put an announcement for, for our Cure Bible Cab weekend. And he looked at that and, wow, that looks interesting. And then he showed up. So we were actually uh, able to talk to him for the next couple of days, uh, a real blessing. And um, we also have uh, Bible studies. If patients are interested in studying the Bible, then we have a place for that as well. And by God's grace, um, a couple of months ago, 
uh, we were able to baptize the first of our patients. Well, we were not doing that. It was the Holy Spirit, but uh, she came as a patient, and now she is a part of our local church. So we, we thank God for that. And uh, we are also preparing another lady for, for that, which is also our patient. So um, by God's grace, he can use us. I will finish uh, with um, a short movie. You can see that's our next project, and uh, it will come here. Yes, I don't know about you, but we are going there, and uh, we're going to uh, try to reach people that are more into New Age, but we will show them that you can't find inner peace in yourself. You have to find inner peace outside from the Bible. So, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. Thank you, uh, Prarel. Next up is uh, Daniel from Dexera. Uh, Denmark has changed since I saw it, or where is this uh, located? It's in Malaga, Spain. Malaga, Spain. Interesting. Okay. Okay, great. All right, so, yeah, we are here to represent Dexera Creative Agency, which is a commercial business supporting our ministry at Verum Productions. And you can see the areas of work that we have. We help businesses grow their brands in these four areas, graphic design, media, web, and strategy. Um, here's our studio in, sorry, in um, southern Sweden. And we were hosting the ASI convention 2020 when we had the pandemic. How many of you are part of that? Okay, nice. Um, and uh, this is one of the responses we've, we've been getting. Wow, if God exists, I wish everyone could understand it. And uh, this is in response to um, what we've been putting out for our ministry at Verum Productions. And uh, we officially launched in uh, December 2019. And um, we have found the challenge to reach out to secular people. If people don't believe the Bible, if that's not the, the foundation of where they get their um, Bible knowledge or their um, understanding of the world, their worldview, then it's very difficult to give Bible studies. So our aim has been to um, help people towards a lasting relationship with God by restoring trust in the Bible. I say about this? Yeah. Yeah. Adverum means toward the truth, so that's what we're about. And we seek to do this through documentary-style films uh, that are made in high quality. And uh, yeah, this is the journey series that we just finished this summer. And it follows the stories of people who didn't believe in God and they came from an atheist or agnostic background. So we're going to roll a, a short trailer now, and let's hope everything works. 
I was firmly convinced about evolutionism. I was also really vocal against people who believed in God. My young life was formed by criminality and later I went into custody. I have an inquisitive mind and I wondered, is there any truth in the Bible? I had money to spend, so I could afford expensive toys. I felt happy and I had no interest in God. officer in the German army. I'm not a church member, but I would like to prepare to become a gospel minister. I decided to follow God, and I have never regretted my decision. And I got convinced that God loves me and that He wrote the Bible. So I testified publicly that I wanted to be a follower of Jesus. Yes, and we've been getting amazing feedback from all around the world, and here's one of them. Uh, this story is almost like mine. I went through a process like this. I would like to be baptized, even though I have a long way to go in faith. Excellent testimonies. I have already seen most of these, and they are great to share with atheists. God bless you. And thank you for these testimonials. And let me tell you that they are being shared with people who are beginning to study the Bible. And they are a great help and blessing. So, uh, Journeys has aired around the world on many broadcasting and web-based networks. It's been dubbed or subtitled into Spanish, Italian, German, Romanian, Slovene, Czech and Bulgarian. Yes, and uh, of course we can't do this alone, so we have a team of, of six friends um, and we are passionate about our mission, we have different roles. Uh, Heber, Darwin and Patrick, they are our talented videographers and editors. And Daniel is taking care of graphics, logistics and communications, we couldn't do it without Daniel. And Johannes and David take care of our website and uh, I uh, do writing and producing. And these are just some pictures from the different productions in uh, different countries, traveling around, having long days and short days. And cold days and very hot days, like this one here. Yeah, and so this is our last production we did this summer with Chris Berg Berger in Germany. And some of you may know that recently he's just been diagnosed with a very serious condition. Um, from his hospital bed, he has been sharing the video of his story to all his contacts, his friends, relatives, everyone he, he can communicate to. And the, the video's views have quadrupled in the last week. So as we talk about sharing, um, we have, you may have seen on our booth the little cards that we printed, printed 2,000 of them. just to get going with uh, equipping you with something very small but very powerful to share testimonies. Yes, and, and each journey, it also, uh, besides conversions, they, they feature other themes like uh, uh, recovery from drug addiction and criminality, new age, uh, the supernatural, speaking in tongues, uh, evolution, biblical marriage. So they're very shareable. It's very easy to think, okay, this person may benefit from watching this video. So, what is the future? We have a couple of exciting projects in the pipelines. You may have heard of the Health and Bible documentary that we've been working on. It took a bit of a slow start during Corona, um, but the aim is to, to have a documentary that uh, shows what the Bible has to say about health and show how science is validating it. Um, we also have some, some uh, testimonies lined up for Journeys 2. 
and we'll get going with that as soon as we, we have funding for it. Um, we really want to keep in touch with you all and you can come to our website at veronproductions.com where you can see all the videos, you can sign up to a newsletter um, and if you want to make a donation you can do that through there as well. And if you're on social media, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and most recently TikTok. Not sure anyone's on that but that's where some people are, so we, we want to be there too. Yes, thank you. Amen, thank you. And also if anyone is uh, thinking of starting something or building a brand, I could also recommend Dexera and uh, Daniel and his team. Next, Daniel up from Living Water. All right, Happy New Year, everyone. Biblically speaking, the sun is down, so we are in 2023. Um, yeah, this is always a favorite part of the program for me here at ASI, to hear from different ministries and see what is happening in Scandinavia. Uh, so Living Water Ministry, uh, 2023 is actually a very special year that we're moving into because our ministry will have existed for 20 years. Um, so 20 years ago, in 2003, uh, I got married to Sylvia and we started a ministry together called Living Water. And over the last 20 years, the Lord has led us to 30 different countries in the world where we have preached the gospel and done evangelistic series, prophecy seminars, revival conferences, and things like that. So we've been very privileged to be able to uh, see many parts of the world and what God is doing in different places. And uh, it's been a great, great blessing over the, year, over the years to be able to experience the power of the gospel in the lives of people. And I thought that... Um, as I would share with you shortly here today, that I would actually just like to highlight um, two Bible texts that have strengthened us throughout these last 20 years. So as I look back and I was praying about this and thinking about it, what has really kept us going, what has inspired us, what has been a motivation to continue in ministry? And um, the first of these verses is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And uh, I would almost say that this is kind of like a motto of our ministry, of Living Water Ministry, which is a teaching and preaching and um, evangelistic uh, ministry. Uh, and uh, Jesus speaks these words to Paul the Apostle, and he says, uh, he said to me, and Paul is writing this down, he says, the words of Jesus that were spoken to him, uh, and Jesus says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect, and then comes this kind of unexpected turn here, my strength is made perfect in what? In weakness. For and I'm weak, I am strong. And I've really seen this over the last 20 years that what God will often do with us in ministry is he will bring us to the end of ourselves. He will bring us to a point where we have to depend upon the power of God and the spirit of God. And then we know that all the glory belongs to him, amen? And we realize that we can't do anything in and of ourselves, but we need the power of God in our lives. And uh, I could spend, yeah, all night sharing with you many stories over the last 20 years of how this verse uh, has been a reality. So that's one of the pillars that I feel has kept us going and given us a foundation over the last 20 years. And then the next text is a text that is probably the verse in the Bible that I've quoted most over the last 20 years. It's the Bible verse that I basically pray every time I get up before I teach a class, uh, teach a seminar, preach at a conference, do an evangelistic meeting. This is the verse that I go to. And that is Isaiah 55 verse 11. Uh, and it says, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. God speaking here through Isaiah. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. I mean, that's so beautiful and so powerful. So whether I'm speaking somewhere in the north of Norway to three people giving a Bible study, or I'm in the home of a person giving a Bible study, or I'm down in Africa speaking at a conference to 3,000 people, this promise is true, amen? And it's true for you, and I, I just want to you know, throw this out here, that whatever ministry you are involved in, whatever ways of communication you are involved in, this is a promise that you can claim. The God's word, when you spread it, when you sow that seed, it will not return void. He said it, amen? Uh, it will bring about 
what God has ordained it to bring about. And I think the full results of all of our ministry endeavors we will first see when we, when we get to heaven. It will be very, very powerful and interesting. So those are the two uh, Bible texts and the two really principles, or you could call it pillars, that have kept us going these last 20 years. Now, over the last 20 years, when we started, um, you know, we weren't, we weren't really into media so much, but as time goes on, uh, we did get a lot into media, and so a lot of the materials have been recorded, evangelistic series, uh, prophecy seminars, conference messages, teaching sessions, and we've tried to bring kind of our, all of this material together in one place. And uh, you can go and check out livingwater.no. Now, this website is built in such a way that it has two languages. So when you come in, it's English. So there's lots of English material. But then there's also a lot of Norwegian material uh, since our base has been Norway these last 20 years. And so there's also a lot of Norwegian content there. So you will find sermons, seminars, short films, articles, evangelistic material, uh, and a lot more. So you can go and check that out, livingwater.no. And oh, I just want to say something about a project that we've been recently involved in. Um, I am also a pastor and the conference evangelist here in Norway, but I pastor actually the church in Hunnefoss, where many of you today were doing some outreach. And um, throughout the fall, we ran an evangelistic series for 10 weeks. We had 20 presentations um, called, we titled it Hope for the Future, Hope for Framtiden. And um, it was a great blessing to be able to reach out to the community. We had a core group of people coming. We have some people preparing for baptism. We're very thankful for what the Lord is doing, uh, even in this secular country of Norway, and even so close by where we are right now. So this is actually a series that we've made available online as well. It's all up on our website, but we also dedicated a special website for this series called framtiden.org, and that means thefuture.org in Norwegian. And so you have a full um, evangelist series available in the Norwegian language and you know it's interesting because for those of you that are Norwegian here you can just share this link with someone you can just say hey go to framtiden.org which is a very nice domain name by the way <laughs> thefuture.org and hey check this out and you find this entire evangelistic series um, that is made available there so just a little bit about what else we do as Living Water. Uh, we run yearly camp meetings every summer um, in a very beautiful location here in Norway. And for those of you that are visiting Norway, you get a little bit of an impression of Norway now in the winter, but you need to see Norway in the summer. <laughs> It's beautiful. You have the, you know, the midnight sun and everything. And we are pretty much in the heart of Norway, um, in Telemark, and we have a beautiful location, Fyrestal, where we've been gathering since 2012. So basically this year we had our, because we couldn't have a conference in 2020, this year we had our 10th camp meeting. So we're kind of on the same track as, as ASI, as this is the 10th convention. Uh, so in 2000, um, 12, we started there. Uh, we started with about 120 people. It grew every single year until the pandemic. We had, we had only growth up to 2019. And in 2019, we had 500 people. So it was a great uh, event. And, and what was beautiful is we ran out of space and just the year that we thought, hey, we need another place, they built this brand new big hall for 600 people. So we were like, eh, praise God. And uh, yeah, so you can come uh, to those gatherings. Uh, we, each year we're in the beginning of July, the first week of July in Fudestal, uh from Tuesdays to, to Sunday, we have our, our camp meeting. Um, when the pandemic happened, we couldn't have it. And so um, uh, after the pandemic was over, 2021, we had about 300. Uh, 2022 this year, a little above 300. So we're now we're kind of like gaining our momentum back now after, after COVID. Um, so this year we had the theme Almost Home. We studied through the book of Revelation from chapter 12 to chapter 22. And um, I just want to say with the last minute here remaining, uh, this is our theme for 2023, uh, Encounters with Jesus. So this uh, 2022, we spend our time in the book of Revelation. Uh, coming summer, we're going to spend our time in the Gospels, and we're going to look at all these interactions that Jesus had with individuals, whether it's through miracles or preaching or personal meetings uh, with people. So we're going to study into that. So you are very welcome. Uh, you can put that in your agenda, um, July 4 to 9, 2023 Living Water Summer Camp. You can find more information at livingwater.no and there's also a promo video there. I won't show it now for time's sake, but you can, you can see it there. So thank you very much 
and uh, welcome to Living Water Summer Camp. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Registration is open tomorrow or not yet? Uh, either way, looking forward to it. And also, uh, next up is uh, Jeremy from Matson. Um, also, um, the meeting series that you shared, Dan, uh, that uh, I can really recommend it. I've already shared it to other people that have just uh, dropped by church and they wonder questions about things, and that's a good um, opportunity. Okay, thank you. Happy Sunday. <laughs> Biblically speaking, right? <laughs> It is Sunday. So, um, yeah, that's a, a great privilege to be here together with you. How many of you have heard about Mattis and Mission School? I see your hands. How many of you have been to Mattis and Mission School? Oh, yeah, it's almost the same amount. That's great. For those of you who haven't, you're very welcome to come and visit. Of course, it is a, an 11-month training program uh, where we have Bible, evangelism, leadership, health, and agriculture as main areas with a focus on character building in a family-like environment. I would like to ask if you can show the video of a day. What does a day look at like at Mattison? And the, in the end, before you do that, in the end, I would like to ask all people that have been to Matteson as students uh, or our workers there to come up front, okay? Go for it. My name is Clara. I'm Norwegian American and I'm a Matteson student this year. Um, it starts with worship at 7.30. We fellowship together and pray. I held the morning, uh, the morning worship this morning. It was on Matthew 14, verses 22 to 33, the passage on when Jesus walked on the water. I divided them into groups of two, and they reread the passage, and I had them talk about how this passage made them feel, what stuck out the most to them. And then afterwards, everyone shared. I got some comments later that they really appreciated it. Breakfast team has to has to get up early and prepare breakfast from seven to seven thirty. So then, when worship starts, breakfast is actually ready on the table, so that after worship we can just start eating. And then we have classes. This week we had about Christian home with Jeremy and Diana, just different things about marriage and family and children and how to best cultivate a Christ-like family home. So the afternoons are usually either practical work or outreach. Today, during practical work, we were basically preparing garlic to plant and then some of it we left to, to consume now. After that, we went and harvested all the all of the ripe tomatoes in the greenhouse, and those are good tomatoes. <laughs> some of the boys also harvested some pumpkins today, and we're preparing now for the inspiration weekend. So several um, people were working inside, either in the kitchen or with other other things that need to be done before the inspiration weekend starts. So there's a lot that's been done today. We come back here and whoever's on supper team prepares supper and then we eat together at 6. Usually on days we have practical work, we have just free time after that. Um, sometimes we also have choir. Um, and then after 8 we have free time. Matteson is one of my favorite places on earth. For me, my greatest desire is to grow closer to God. And this is such a perfect place to be able to do that. You, the atmosphere here is, is so spiritually uplifting. I love it. <laughs> That was the premiere of that video. We're thankful to Daniel in, uh, from Sweden. He's not here, but he, he uh, came uh, some days before the Inspiration Weekend and offered to do a promo video. And yeah, we're very thankful. Everybody come up front here. Yes. 
That's nice. You have uh, both current and uh, alumni, alumni students here. Um, yeah. So I thought I didn't prepare for this, but uh, I would want to ask, what did Matheson mean to you in one sentence or something like that? I don't know if anybody wants to say something. Yeah. Sorry. I'll hold it so it doesn't. No, no, sorry. It was a life-transforming year with meeting a new family and connecting with wonderful people. Well, I've always been uh, wanting to do mission work, and this was uh, a really good place for me to get started doing full-time mission. Yeah. Give me a signal if you want to say something. Okay. Yeah. It's like a second family to me. Better mic? Okay. Anybody else? Um, it really gave you a good understanding of what it means to work in ministry in a sense, like in all the senses, not just like, oh, you know, I, I want to do some ministry. Like it gave you a deep understanding of what it means to give your life to Jesus and how rich uh, it can be in all areas. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yeah, I think that's good. Um, yeah, so that's our desire is to, to train missionaries for life that they understand that all of their time, talents, and resources are here, God-given, to use it in God's work. So that is our desire. Thank you very much for coming up. We're going to end with a, a song. Instead of having an, a, another congregational song, we decided we're going to have a special music for you, and it is on the topic of who will go for me? Who will be that missionary who can go to a foreign land or even at the home place right so i want to thank you for the alumni coming up we're going to have a song now with who will go for me with the current student group thank you and as they're going down i can also say that that uh, we have an inspiration weekend also coming up on the 28th to the 30th of april um, so if you want to come to that you can see more information at the the booth as well as we have um, you know, if you want to come and check out Matheson as a student, or like, how is it to be there for a day or a couple days or so, you are our guest, you're welcome to come and visit. Um, and finally, if you would like to also support uh, this army of workers as our youth rightly trained, which is what we know will make the, the second coming actually come quicker. How soon would the message of a crucified, risen, and soon coming Savior be carried to the whole world? Then you can become a Macedonian, uh, inspired by, by uh, Paul writing about the Macedonians that, that support the work of God.
I feel very. Do you want me? Very surrounded by mics here. Uh, Lifestyle TV, last ASI in, what was it, uh, April. How many of you were at Lifestyle TV in April? Ah, a few of you here, and then a lot that are not here. We had a very good ASI hosted at our place there in April. The Lord has really, really blessed. You know, as we moved to this place, we had no idea what God was going to do. Uh, we thought we were going to build a new place in a field, and instead God brought us here to Hagegården in Värmland in, uh, in a beautiful, beautiful setting in nature. Um, working with media, TV production for uh, 17 years now, um, we had no idea we were going to go into anything else than media. But when Lord brought us to this place, which was before a retreat center and a four-star hotel, then we began to see that God had bigger plans than what we had thought before, uh, giving us a lot of opportunities to also work with people on a more personal level than just working with media. And to give you a few ideas and just some examples, one really neat thing was um, our magazine that you've been out passing out this afternoon, Lifestyle View. Uh, the Lone Church plant is using it a lot, and uh, they were passing them out uh, around the area they have Lon. and. About two days after they had been passing out a big number, we got a phone call from a lady that said she would like to book rooms for, I think, five days. She really needed a place in nature, a place she could go to relax and uh, recuperate. And that was actually our first guest of what we started out with as more of a hotel setting, uh, bed and breakfast, but we're developing more into a, a retreat uh, center. And so she came up, uh, educated lady, worked as a um, researcher at the Lyon University uh, and stayed with us uh, for five days. The first morning she came afterwards and says, um, is it safe to walk outside? I, I noticed some wild animals on the field. And, and I thought, and I thought, you mean the deers that were there this morning? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's safe. You can, you can go out and walk in the forest. And then she started walking and she just enjoyed walking out in the forest. And uh, after a while she came and says, I noticed there's an artwork on the wall and it looks like it has a cross on it. Are you Christians? And that gave us opportunity at breakfast to share and sit and talk about it. And uh, so we had some good conversations and uh, we were getting to Friday afternoon and we just had to getting ready to start a uh, sundown worship together as a team. And I felt impressed to go and talk to this lady. And so I went and asked her, I said, I, I don't want to impose anything, but if you're interested, we are a group of staff, we're meeting for a short worship and we'll have a, a little uh, snack, something to eat afterwards. She looked at me and says, is it, are you reading the Bible? And I didn't know which way this question was going to go. And I, and I just said, yes, we will. I said, well, then I would like to come. i like to hear how you read the Bible. And so she came and she listened in. And, and we had a very nice visit with her. Uh, afterwards, we felt impressed. It was just getting evening and the sun was getting low on the horizon. And I thought, have you ever been canoeing? And she said, no, but I would love to says, why don't we go canoeing tonight? We will take you out on the lake. And so just as the sun was setting, we took her out on a canoe trip on the lake. And you can, see, can imagine the conversation from early and the Bible study just continued right there as the sun is setting out on the lake in the canoes. So amazing opportunities to connect with people when you're out like that in nature and you work with them individually. How did this lady come? Somebody gave her a magazine and she found it in there. This summer we ran a um, health program, as you heard a little bit from Steps for Life. We cooperated with them and hosted a program for one week where they had guests come. And what was really amazing to us this time is where people heard about the, uh, the whole health week from the magazine. Almost all of the 18 guests that was there, fully paying guests, came because they had seen an advertising in the magazine. Some of them has no other contact with the Adventist church, 
One of the ladies was saying, I, say, I, I got the magazine and I actually don't even know how I'm getting this magazine. But I found it so interested and so she stayed with us that week. And amazing contacts and connections that lead people to Christ and to his church. Um, so this summer we will be experimenting with new sessions of uh, retreats and um, working a little on retreating the programs and we'll be running um, I think about eight weeks of different programs during the summer. And so I noticed the other day when we had this network session that there was about 50% in here that was looking for volunteer positions. And we have some offers this summer. We would love to have some of you come and work with us to help us out to run some of these special retreat programs and connect with people. It could be anything from working with food, with kitchen, with guests, music, massage, outdoor activities, taking people on hikes, taking them on canoe trips down the lake, uh, any of these things. So if you're interested, come and see us. Uh, afterwards, you will get a brochure here as well that they will pass out and uh, you can look more into that. Uh, but what is really interesting, as we work in this community, we have also realized there is two hours to our closest church. In fact, our closest neighbor church is Madison. Uh, so in Sweden, there is a longer distance to the closest church. So we are starting a church plant, which I don't know if any, how many have been part of starting a church plant in here? Anybody? I don't know about you, but to me, that is the most exciting thing that I have ever done in my life. I never thought I would be involved in it, but the Lord threw us here, and it is so amazing to be able to work with a community and to see how you step-by-step step work with them and, and bring. And we have several non adventists now that are meeting with us on a regular basis on Sabbath and connecting. In our business community, we do a lot to go out and meet with businesses, to connect with business people. Uh, one of the other business leaders uh, this year told me, he, we were at a business meeting together, and he pulls out of his briefcase, guess what, the magazine. And he tells me, he says, I have this magazine with me everywhere, and I tell everybody about it. He's a non-Adventist business person in the community. And is so excited about what we're doing, this summer he went to the newspaper and he says, you have to go and do an article about what they're doing. So the newspaper came out and they did a two-page spread with front page mention about what Lifestyle TV is doing and the connection to the Adventist church. Only positive. Just so amazing. Uh, three weeks ago, Teresa and I were one of these bigger uh, business gatherings which the county had made for all the business people in the county for a Christmas thing. And so there we are sitting and at the dinner for this, we're sitting across from one of the head politicians, from one of the business people of the business, biggest company in the area, the vice director of the county, and the one who's responsible for health. And so we're sitting there eating dinner with these, thing, these people, and the first guy, this is the businessman, he starts out by saying, oh, I don't know if you guys know these people. This is Klaus and Teresa. They know everything about food, and they have the most amazing food at Hagegården. He hasn't actually been there to eat it. But that's the reputation in the community. And they are talking about it to each other. And it is just so exciting to see what God is doing to connect with other people. And lastly, no, we haven't forgotten media. We're still involved and have an amazing studio. Um, <laughs> that looks like we have some problems in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see if the next picture is better. I think we're trying with our technicians down there. There we go. Uh, yes, we have an amazing studio. Uh, and uh, if you are into cooking, that is one of the things that we found as a niche. This uh, December, we did three different cooking programs for different people. So if you love cooking, come and help us, and we would love to have you come be part. If you like music, and we have heard some amazing music this weekend. We are just starting now this year with music productions. As I mentioned, we had somebody donate a grand Steinway piano, one of the big concert pianos. It is excellent and it's just amazing. So we really want to do more in this area. So come talk to us and we want to schedule you in. And lastly, if you haven't done it yet, the new app that we have, download it on your phone, but don't just use it for yourself. Use it as an opportunity to share with people when you meet others. Help them download it and use it. There is over 1,400 programs on there. 
there is a lot of lot of resources that you can use beside programs there's recipes there's magazines there's everything else so thank you take contact and we appreciate it if you want to hear more sign up to our newsletter it was on a QR code there out in our booth and uh, we'd we'll love to connect with you especially anyone wanting to be part of this summer's sessions thank you Thank you very much. Uh, next up, Melvin from the Christian Life. Uh, quick info. Sorry. Uh, quick info as well about um, logistics. All of you should have received an email or uh, where you can uh, enter your departure time for tomorrow. There's only buses going tomorrow. There's no trains, and uh, buses are leaving from week every hour. Uh, quarter past. Just on info, check your email about that. So we have this cake that a church member made. We're walking around in the city center of Oslo looking for strangers who are up for a spontaneous picnic with us in the park. We ask the first person, someone says yes, great. We tell him, okay, now you invite the next person. He walks around, invites someone else, someone else joins. And we go on until we have a group of about 13 people and we're sitting in front of the Royal Palace in Oslo. We're having a super nice conversation, don't know each other. Within minutes, we're up in spiritual conversations talking about God and his character. And the first guy that is not on the photo, the first guy, he actually was there because of a Tinder date, but she never showed up. So he was pretty sad, but there we came with a cake. And this is the same guy who later in the conversation would say that he is interested in getting to know God. And now he has been going to the church in Trondheim a couple of times. We took Thomas door to door asking people, hey, can we make food for you in your kitchen? And we end up having a Bible study with, for an hour with a group of five physicists, even followed up by another Bible study by Thomas. We took a stranger paragliding, ended up on the way back in the car. We've been talking the whole time. He has been asking question after question about our faith. When we come to the door of his house, he doesn't get out of the car. He stays seated, asking more questions, and we're talking till midnight. We're still in contact with him. We put up a wall in the city of Copenhagen, and hundreds of people that we have never met before are flocking to the wall and we can have conversations with them. Then, now I just heard from Joachim two days ago that the, one of the projects that we did with them, where we were passing out 500 notes to try to help people with their mental health, was actually one of, that led to one person accepting Jesus. With our ministry, The Christian Life, we're doing all kinds of things to try to reach non-Christians. But that's actually not what I want to talk about now in this Spotlight. How many of you would say that your church is struggling with reaching non-Christians? Okay, that's almost every hand. How many of you would say that the church is not creative enough in the ways it does outreach? That's again, many hands. And I agree. That's why we specialize now in trying to help churches with exactly that. Coming up with creative ideas in ways that they can come in contact with the community, uh, consulting, brainstorm sessions, actually organizing the outreach activities for them. We've been doing that in a couple of countries now in Europe uh, these last few months. But that's actually also not what I want to talk about during this spotlight, because I don't believe that outreach should be a church thing. Outreach should be a you thing. Now, should churches do outreach? Yes, and more of it and better and everything like that. But will it finish the work? I don't think so. I think the only way for us to finish the work is if you and I make outreach a personal lifestyle. But here's the problem. It is not our lifestyle. Most people don't even know how, how to reach out in your everyday normal life. Um, we haven't seen the potential of what outreach can be, what it can look like, how fun and exciting it can be, and how many different ways we can do it. 
and how it can be for any one of you. So besides helping churches, ministries, and businesses to be better at mission, we want to help you as an individual. As an individual who is part of a church with a lot of old people. For you who um, has talents that are not being used and you don't know how to use them in mission. For you who haven't experienced yet what it's like to have God work through you in such a way that you cannot explain that days after you're still wondering how that happened and seeing how God touched someone's life through something simple. That's what, we, that's what I want to talk about now. We want to help you in your Christian life. We want you to thrive, to feel that it's exciting, and for you to be a soul winner. So, I'll give you two examples of what we're doing. We do much more, but five minutes is short. One of the things that we do is we make YouTube videos. So we have a channel where we have 129,000 subscribers and two, uh, 20,000 views in the last 28 days, kind of every month. We do both the outreach projects that, we, that you saw some examples of, but also more Bible and Christian, uh, directly Christian videos, like uh, Daniel 2, 7 and 8 in a 15 minute video, why God, cannot answer, uh, why God Cannot End Suffering, explained in five minutes, the investigative judgment, explained in five minutes, also personal conversations about lifestyle and faith, where we just openly share about our own experiences, health struggles and those kind of things. So these videos can actually, we hope that they can be resources for you. We hope that you can use them to share with others. And we have designed many of them, most of them, specifically for non-Christians. So you can easily share them with them and they can be blessed by it. But something that I'm wanting to talk about even more is something else that we have built for you. Kindly. The website kindlymovement.com. And we, you can take out your phone and scan the QR code. This is a social media-like platform that we have developed. It has lots of features like a member map so you can see where people are and connect with them and make new friends and different groups. But most importantly, this page, the challenges. Every week we post a different kindness challenge, creative, um, diverse, and it doesn't matter whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, no matter what talent you have, we put something out there for you. And to non-Christians, we say it's Kindness Project, but among Adventists, this is a great resource for doing outreach. You don't even need to think yourself about what you, what you could do. We're helping you with very simple ideas that anyone can do. Now, five minutes is very short. It's good that the screen is dimming so I can't see the timer. Uh, we can talk more at our booth if you want to know more and hear more stories. We have plenty of those. You can also sign up there for a newsletter. We, every two months, we send out a newsletter with some of the behind the scenes, more insider Adventist uh, information that we're not sharing in our videos. And the last thing I want to say is our ministry so far has just been our family. And my child and wife are handing out our will hand out business cards i'm not sure baby okay we'll talk later you'll get a business card my son will find you um, but there is so much potential with these projects we have noticed and with the platforms that we have that um, that we want a team but we don't want a normal team we want a team that believes that we can do projects that have never been done before we want a team that believes that we should be the head and not the tail. We want a team that believes that God will give us opportunities to give personal Bible studies to Mr. Beast, to Kim Kardashian, to Justin Bieber. Because why not? We dream big because we serve a big God. So we're looking for a team if you want to join the team, we can tell you about what it means. It is for anyone. Anyone can join. And I'll tell you more when you come to me at the booth. You'll be in for an adventure. Thank you, Thank you so much, uh, Melvin. Next up here is Jenny, uh, representing uh, Impact I, Sweden. I need that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
How many of you have ever heard about impact? Please raise your hand. Okay, wow, that's almost everyone. Is there, how many have ever been to an impact event? Okay. And is there someone who has never heard about impact before? Please raise your hand. Okay, it is some of you. Okay, then I would gladly like to share a little bit bef uh, about it to you. So impact is an acronym and it stands for inspiring members to proclaim the advent of Christ together. And its vision is empowered by the spirit. Impact seeks to inspire members to proclaim the advent of Christ together in this generation. So what Impact does is to create an event where we gather together to pray, to listen to inspiring meetings, and then to go out and proclaim the advent of Christ together. So this was created uh, a little bit more than 10 years ago, I think, maybe 20 years even, um, by a group of young people in Norway, and they had this as an inspiration. With such an army of workers as a youth, rightly trained might furnish. How soon the message of a crucified, risen, and soon coming savior might be carried to the whole world. And after they started in Norway, it has spread. It has started in Sweden, in Latvia, in Romania, Denmark, Austria, Finland, Spain, Germany, and Ted Wilson heard about it, and then they made some commercial about it as well. So I just want to encourage, if there's any one of you after this spotlight who feel called by God to, to start one in your country that is not mentioned here, then do it. And um, we had a break in Sweden uh, after 2016, it was laid down, but now we had one last summer. So I just want to share a little bit about it and show you some pictures. So what we did was that we were singing around the bonfire together and Daniel Pell and Sylvia, you were there and Daniel Pell was one of our main speakers. And we were playing music at bonfire and sharing testimonies. We ate good food. <laughs> we sang together and uh, as outreach and also gave out books and flyers and our events was a health expo um, and also the art gallery that uh, the Sandalins made so you see the, the picture there that you were going out with today <laughs> but then it was a lot of other art pieces and afterward Joachim you had a great presentation uh, about the statue and Daniel too. And what we also do is that we have some recreational time. So we go out in nature and here we were going in this beautiful place in South Sweden. And we were also having some beach time. <laughs> um, yes. So here was everyone who was there. So it was a record for Lund Church at that time with all these people, about 50, all together with the church. And I just want to share some testimonies from this outreach. Um, the first one is Marie. So Marie, she was one of those who after work decided to have some ice cream. And she went to town exactly where we were and she heard about it and she got a flyer. And then she came to the Health Expo, to the Prophecy Alt Gallery, the miniseries, and then she came to church for the Sabbath school. And after that, we have had Bible studies with her ever since. And I remember when I had uh, Daniel 7 with her, and she was just so, so like enthusiastic. And it was such, such a joy in my heart to see how she just craved to know more about what was going to happen in the future. The other person was Alexander, that uh, you also saw a picture of before from AFCO. Um, he came to this event. Uh, Ola invited him, he's a neighbor of him. And when he came there and he heard the message that uh, Joachim shared and then the music, he was just like, wow. This is a person who had searched for the meaning of God. He had had a tough life and he searched. And then when he was there, he told us, now I have found what I was looking for. I found God. 
and then they have had Bible studies with him. But he was actually so enthusiastic that when we were going to share about impact um, in the divine service, he wanted to share his experience with everyone in the church. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so there was a lot more, but this is few glimpses of what happened with outreach. Then it is also in reach. And here are some testimonies of those who were at impact. Inspiring, it feels like a taste of the early church. It would be so powerful if every church were like this. May many more come and experience impact and start impact in their country. And one of us said, inspiring, challenging, made me reconsider my faith and attitude towards mission and working for God in my everyday life. Another one said, it has been a real blessing to me here and to see the work that God has done. When I was reading the former testimonies from other impact events and they there say how it was life changing, I didn't believe them. But now I have experienced it myself. So this is a glimpse. This is just the beginning of impact and I'm so excited to tell you that we will have our next event this summer, the 23rd uh, to 30 of July. So um, book it in your calendar and come. And again I want to tell you if there's someone of you who feel the calling of God to start this in your own country, then do it. And if you want more information, you can come to me or Joachim or Casper or any other of the impact leaders and we can tell you more. So thank you so much. Thank you, Jenny. And uh, dates that you saw there were for Impact Sweden. Uh, there will also be Impact Norway and for other chapters. <clears throat> yes, so we will have Impact in Norway also. And I would like to invite the planning team to come up, so you can see who we are. Um, this uh, last summer we had impact in Kongsberg and we did some things we had never done before. We um, did outreach to Ukrainian people. Um, in Kongsberg there came um, a refugee, a huge, they, built, they set up a huge refugee camp in, or how, what do you call it, in, uh, in Kongsberg. So we took some of them out to nature walks and hikes, they could do something else than their regular life. And two of our impact team, they were themselves from Ukraine. So, and um, so that was a new uh, and good experience. Also in Kongsberg, uh, we had um, we helped the church to start a food serving in church. Um, now for the coming year, we will be in Oslo. And you're all invited to come to Impact from June 22 to July 2, last week of June. And um, the church there uh, really wants us to come and they have many ideas of outreach activities we can do in, in Oslo. And um, more details will come later, but save the date. And uh, we look forward to have you join. So, yes, that was about the impact. <laughs> yes. Then I will continue to say something else. I, I have another presentation also. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, this was a bit spontaneous. Um, I was, um, yeah. <clears throat> I have um, a ministry which I have called Apps to Grow, uh, which is not very evangelistic as such, but um, it's more, by, more providing tools that may be used for evangelism and for church and for ministries um, online uh, software. Which, is, which I didn't make, but it is open source. And so one can get it relatively cheap with modules for many different purposes. Um, 
what I have been doing mostly is accounting because by profession I I have been a, a certified accountant. So I use this software for accounting and for payroll and for um, e-commerce and different things that many ministries need. And this year I have been working on some functions that are useful for churches. Um, yeah. One thing that most people don't think about, but the accountant has to think about, is like Sabbath school offering goes to Sabbath, is 13th Sabbath, every quarter is different. For divine service, the offering might be to a different cause every Sabbath. And I have made some things that make it easy for the accountant to get things correctly, almost automatically. And um, easy to import and export bank transactions and donations from VIPs or from other mobile payment systems. And um, I look forward to provide things that are useful for churches and ministries. And I look forward to yeah, hear your needs and see if someone will join this also. Thank you. Thank you very much, Henrik. Uh, last up here is Jeremy again, representing OCI. Yes, uh, OCI, Apple Centers International, is an organization that has yeah, grown a lot in the last years. I would like to show a video that was done 10 years ago, but it's still the same, or the, the services and, the, and the, what OCI stands for. But since then, we have grown with 278%. So it has grown a lot. We have 250 ministries worldwide at the moment. And um, i just like to, to uh, highlight before just showing the video, and that's, that's it. Um, one of the things that could be relevant and interesting for you is go to outpostcenters.org, and if you want to find a job or job opportunities, you can find job opportunities there. And also for ministries, you can look for volunteers or workers. You can sign up and you can show what you're interested in on your profile. So if you sign up uh, with, a, with your, an account, you can get free resources and you can also have that listing. And it's becoming bigger and bigger, so there's a lot of uh, opportunities. So then I'll just show, show the, what OCI is about here and that's it. Despite the world's emphasis on interconnectivity, there's a growing sense of isolation. Having a place of community, a place to belong, is an important value. OCI provides that value to supporting ministries and the leaders who make those ministries thrive. Being an OCI member has been a landmark for us because we realize that we're not alone, you know, that there's this whole network of other people that have very similar struggles, have very similar challenges, and not have to reinvent the wheel and get advice from people who have done things at work. It has been a great blessing and great opportunities on how to share ideas and even join up together to accomplish other objectives is really a beautiful thing. Going to OCI leadership retreats and, and then actually getting to meet other missionaries that are going through some of the exact same things you are. I think right from the get-go has been a huge blessing to us. You know, we're not just here in the middle of the Amazon all by ourselves, but there's people all over the world doing what we're doing, and we're part of that family, we're part of that team, and try to inspire them that we're all working together for the same cause. I think that's what OCI has helped inspire in me. Being a part of a family like OCI helps the church at large to understand that they we're trying to work with the church as a team to accomplish God's work and the mission for the church. OCI and all of its affiliates are a great underlying support to the local organizational outreach and our mission emphasis in trying to help people realize that Jesus is coming soon. If it wasn't for the core beginning relationship with OCI, Light would not have had such an opportunity to grow and develop. And now, when we work to develop a new project, once they're established, we encourage them then to become OCI members. 
And then that way they can see even a broader picture that there's a hundred ministries in the world that are also engaging in this similar kind of work. The yearly retreats and the networking that we're able to do and the family, just that by itself would be enough to belong to a group of people such as Seventh-day Adventist Christians, lay people even, uh, organized to do as much as we can do for the Lord. It's, it's been huge, a blessing. As you can see where we live, we are so isolated from not even other OCI members in the States all around the world, but just from our neighbors. So it's very easy to, to start feeling that you're alone in the world. And I can say that since we've joined OCI, the contact that we've had with other ministries, not only in Africa, but around the world, removes that feeling of total isolation because you now meet people who have the same challenges as you. You're able to talk with them. There's experienced people that can give you advice on things that they've already encountered many years before. And so that's a massive net of support that, that we feel we, we can't go without. That's really OCI. There is a family and we share knowledge, share resources, help each other, uh, helping other institutions to get on their feet and uh, also learning from them. With nearly 90 members in this extended family, it's the role of OCI to create this worldwide community of supporting ministries. These ministries work in harmony with the aim of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. That is, to hasten the return of Jesus Christ. So that in our workshop tomorrow, we will go through a lot of the resources that OCI provides to ministries and to, to individuals uh, like yourselves. So that's, that's why I'm not focusing on that. And also I wanted to mention that um, on the 15th to the 19th of March, this year, this coming year, or it depends on, right, this year, uh, if Daniel would say, uh, is the OCI International Retreat in Colombia. Um, so if you go to outpostcenters.org, you can find more information on that and register for that if you want to go to Colombia. Um, but if you want to stay here in Europe, we're going to have a retreat on the 16th to the 19th of September in Romania. Uh, OCI Europe retreat, uh, uh, European retreat. So uh, we invited the division, we invited lots of people, and you are invited to join us to Romania. So thank you. Thank you as well. Thank you as well, Jeremy. Uh, maybe I can also ask you, there have been a lot of um, different events mentioned here. Uh, could you make a short list, summarized list of the dif different events that have been mentioned uh, so that people can, uh, we can show that on the slide later on and we can take a picture and we can uh, see uh, which one you can attend later on. Uh, one announcement uh, before the closing song. We will sing the theme song, I Will Go, from the last or the previous uh, convention. Uh, some people have been trying to accessing the website Kindly Movement, from uh, which Melvin mentioned, but uh, it's not accessible from this network here uh, because of the Wi-Fi. But it is working, just for your information. So with that, uh, let's sing the song, and uh, there will be a short break until 6.30, where we will have the New Year's program.
Yes, we'll meet again in one hour. Um, did have one information here. If there's some of you who have not communicated yet and have also not uh, contributed um, with the payment for your registration, then there's also opportunity to do that afterwards um, by the registration booth. But we'll meet again in one hour uh, for the New Year's program. Thank you.